Hello everyone, Verdict Zero here, and we are continuing with our City of Heroes walkthrough. This is part three, and today joining me is Soro. Now, I don't know him very well. In fact, I just met him, so I don't know how well this is going to go, and wow, it's a lot of frame rate. Okay, I don't know what that was. But now, let's go to our contact named Officer Fields. Okay, let's just get out of here real quick. The frame rate is eating me alive. Oh, gosh. Alright, there we go. Frame rate's over. So, we are going to this waypoint. I just checked my map real quick. The hotkey for your map is M. So, if you just want to run and press M at the same time, then you definitely can do so. Uh, another hotkey is R. This way you'll auto-run. And you won't even have to press anything. And it'll just be excellent. Now, my friend Soro there is, an, uh, is a stalker, which is like an assassin. He has this ability called hide, which makes him go invisible. And when he attacks from being invisible, he lands critical hits. So... Let's go speak with Detective Pierce about whatever Officer Fields want me to, wants me to do. There we go. Detective Pierce. Speak with Witness of the Murder. Alright, Witness of the Murder. Tell me what happened. Okay. Go to the sewers where the Vazlock was last seen. So, the Vazlock, unlike Hellions, that are a group of thugs. Vazlock are mainly necrophiliacs. They, uh, they're into the whole necromancy thing, and they enjoy, they're twisted doctors who enjoy making cadavers, like so, and usually themselves, they're, they are mortifactors. So let's put some of these sick people in their places, because that is just gross. Why would you make a zombie? We have to defeat 10 Vazalok. Now it's only 8. So let's jump up here and punch him real quick. And win. Mortifactor. Target blocked. Let's get up on here. So. Let's try to uh, recruit this person here. Cram cam. See if we can't uh, recruit him. These people aren't very much of a talkative bunch, but it's okay. I'll be the one talking. So, uh, after when you do missions like these, and they're like cooperative zone missions, like where people can go in the mission with you, and but they don't necessarily have to be on your team. Then usually you just want to befriend those people or put them on your team. Because, I mean, you just want to be a big happy family, right? You don't want stuff happening. What is with this frame rate that's randomly just spurring up? It's not... It's difficult to play this game with a frame rate. Okay. Excuse me, please. I'll stop recording and I'll be right back after this frame rate issue is dealt with. It seems like the frame rate is over, hopefully. Knock on wood. What do you mean? Leave. Speak with Victoria Manuel. Let's go speak with her. So these first, uh, first zone missions are usually... Very easy. All you gotta do is just talk. And that person left, because apparently he didn't get the memo. Push back the Vazlot near Victoria Manuel's theater. So let's go beat those guys. So, 
This game can get very, very intense once you get a full team. Right now in these early levels... Oh, and now I'm alone. Okay. Well, in these early levels, it's really hard to get a team together, as you are seeing right here. These people don't have the attention span of our friend... Uh, Force, or whatever. What was his name? I befriended him. Ghetto Thrust. If you remember him from last episode. So, we're just gonna have to do that. That sweeping cross that I did, that second attack, not the two punches, but that one big punch, that's a cone, which means everyone in 90 degrees of me will get hit by it. For example, if we can get these guys close together, like this, oh, no, never mind, I missed. I would be able to hit both of them because it's an arc. If they were close enough, that is, of course. Now, one major feature about the Brute is that the Brute also has a Fury Bar right down here under the Endurance. This Fury Bar increases the more damage I do and the more damage I take. So, the more I punch and the more I get punched, I become angrier. And that anger fuels toward my damage. And the longer I fight, the more damage I do. Which is uh, very good. It's, it's very... Brute must be one of the easiest classes to start out with. Just because you don't have the aggro of a tank, so you don't have to worry about dying too much. You still have a bunch of health. And you do insane amount of damage over time. So Brute is like probably the most balanced out of uh, all the other archetypes. Or classes. And so we're going to try to befriend this guy. There we go. Trick arrow. Oh, he might be doing something else, in fact. So, I guess we're still on our own. Stop the Vazlog plot promenade. So, I guess... Yeah, that person didn't want to join their team. That's totally fine. We'll just keep beating these crazy people and their crazy ideas of for fun. I can never understand how someone might think that would be fun to take cadavers of people. That's just gross. So... And don't worry, you're not always stuck with this running... Okay, you don't always run. I will go over that next time I level up, which is actually very, very soon here. So let's stop the Vasilik plot against the Promenade. Now, this is an actual, not a cooperative zone mission. This is an actual mission. So when it's an actual mission for only your team, it will go into this screen, the loading screen, and you will be able to then have the mission to yourself without strangers running in the middle of it. So, let's do this mission. Of course, it's in the sewers, because be these people are sick. So, let's uh, rescue these actors. Now, this is an embalmed cadaver. That means he is equipped with an explosive charge, so we want to kill him first, so he doesn't beat the shit out of us. I missed. That was quite sad. But these zombies are no match for me, and my... Flaming fist so pain. No one in there. Let's go down. Now, if I don't know if you want to read the uh, captions or not, I am personally I'm not. And so, yeah, there we go. Pay no attention to the uh, salvage. If you see invention salvage found or recipe found or salvage found. Uh, I will go over that in a different time, in a different tutorial, because that is more of an expert uh, idea, expert ideology. I cannot enter. Okay. Well, let's go defeat Joseph Bot. I think that's his name, Joseph Bot. Okay. Well, that sewer is no longer a sewer. Uh, also, another tip, when you level up, you want to kill as much stuff as you can, because you have that power-up that you can use. You can definitely use. 
a lot. Embalmed cadaver. And also, I forget to mention this. I use it all the time, but I forget to mention it. When you start off, you get two inherent attack powers. Brawl, which is normal punch, and it doesn't take any endurance to use. And... Hello. And your projectile that you get for whatever origin. Let's see this guy. Joseph Bot. This is Officer Fields, can you hear me? Matthew Abishay sent me some intel on Bot. He has been powered by something called a life machine, but you need to destroy it to defeat him. So if you notice, I try to punch him, but nothing happens. So let's destroy this machine. Because if he likes it so much, let's just destroy it. There we go. Now I can actually kill him. This guy is, I don't even know what this guy is like, some kind of prostitute or someone who really enjoys latex. So, there we go, defeated him. Pretty easy when you're a brute. Exit out into Atlas Park. Some badass music starts playing for whatever reason. Atlas Park. I'm going to start cutting out the uh, loading screens in my next episodes because there's no point. You all, you've already seen how Atlas Park looks like, so there really is no point in the uh, the loading process. So after this episode, that is exactly what I will do. go talk to officer fields in fact we can actually call him and we are done we have gained some experience and we can be introduced to a new contact Aaron theory situation with arachnos and atlas park so we have Aaron theory diary or whatever his name is let's uh, oh and you can also play this game in first person if you'd like but I don't think this is a good game to play in third person so, let's go off to Miss Liberty, and that will be the the end for this uh, story arc, this episode. These cars play some awesome music. Some people don't. Oh, what is attacking me? These little clockwork things. You don't need to uh, know the backstory of these things just yet, but they do s some hanging around in Atlas Park. They have electric attacks. Don't worry, this isn't Pokemon. If you're made of water or something, you're not gonna zap up. But they just have electric attacks, energy attacks, so if you don't have much resistance to electric attacks, then you should uh, consult a doctor today. Also, if you notice I'm not clicking on any of them, to target people, you can also just click one of your powers, your attack powers, and it'll auto-target the closest person. So, let's go to Miss Liberté. Always, always, always keep an eye on your health bar. Because you don't want to be dying and wasting inspirations for something you don't even need to. Like, some stupid thing. If they're incredibly powerful people and you get overwhelmed, then yes, that is a good reason. Uh, but... Really, like, you shouldn't be dying. Do we have any enhancements? We do. Can't use any, though. So, we're just gonna sell them. The stores in this zone are just these people in red suits. There's one here, and there's one on the other side. And whatever you don't need, just always, always sell. Never throw away, just sell. Because you really need money, or influence. Which is how what the money is called in this game. Oh, kidney spears. That's funny. Train to a new level, train up to next level. So, at at level 4, you have the choice to choose from a new pool power set. These are secondary, or th uh, third sets that you can choose. You, and you can choose four of these kinds of sets, so you can choose a lot of different powers to customize your character. There's concealment, which has to do with invisibility, flight, self-explanatory, fighting, which gives you two more attacks and two more defense 
defensive powers. Leadership, which gives buffs to er everyone around you and you including. Leaping. Medicine. Presence, which is like aggroing the group, which I think is the most unnecessary thing. Speed and teleportation. Now there's four, four of these groups are for your traveling powers. Teleportation, speed, leaping, and flight. Now whenever someone gets their first hero, makes their first hero, they're like, I want to fly. So obviously, there you go. You got flight. Uh, this is the most, um, this is the easiest, most easiest travel power to use and most effective because you can go as high as you want, as how far as you want without worrying about, you know, falling or get running into a wall or something. So this is the easiest. Then comes leaping, which is actually super jumping, which I will actually use because not a lot of people think about it when they think of superheroes. But this literally is what it means. Speed, super speed, pretty self-explanatory. Super speed is very the fastest, but it's very very hard to uh, control and you can't go around, you can't go over objects, so you have to go around them. Leaping is a mix between flight and super speed. And teleportation, that's a bit tricky. That's pretty much you just choose where you want to teleport and you go there, but you do have a certain limit to your range. So it's not like you can teleport across the map in one stride. So I'm going to use Super Jump. And, uh... I'm actually going to quit this team. I don't know why I joined. Away I go. And let's try this out. We got some, uh, Super Jump. And there we go. This is me using Super Jump. This is how far I jump. It's actually a very good travel power because you move much quicker than sprint. One thing I also want to cover now, since we're up here, is exploration badges. Which are right there, you can see under the flag. Badge earned. Exploration badges. Look for exploration badges throughout the game. You can find them on the ground if you look closely. Finding new exploration badges earns you XP. Finding all the exploration badges in a zone while in Super Groomer will earn... Okay, that's not it. So you can earn badges by getting badges. You can earn achievements, pretty much. That's what it is. There's also a badge up here on this globe. So when you learn to fly or when you have super jump, just get up here. And I have just showed you two badge locations. Both of those badges are pretty important for something that I will explain later in the game. And yes, you do take fall damage. What the hell? Just because you are a superhero doesn't mean you can't die from falling. Well, you actually can't die from falling. You take a, quite a bit of damage, but you can't die from falling. You'll always have at least one health point left so thank you guys for watching this city of heroes walkthrough this has been Burdick Zero and I'm bidding you adieu